All right, section 7.2. Now we're going to actually learn how the normal distribution is used. So we're going to find and interpret area under a normal curve, not just z. Um, but uh, and then we're also going to find the value of a normal random variable. Uh, so those are the two, two targets here. So here's a, we're going to start with an example. Um, so IQ tests, they're kind of controversial. They're not great assessments of intelligence. They've been shown to be very biased. Um, but they are some gauge of intelligence quotient. Again, there's no real agreement about what that means. Um, but they are very frequently used to maybe assess someone and see a gauge of their intelligence. So there's no, there's no guideline for exactly what it means to be a genius. This psychologist from um, early 20th century, <coughs> excuse me, um, set a guideline of 140, which with today's test would be 136 uh, for a genius. So the question is, if IQ scores have a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15, what proportion of individuals are potential geniuses? So let's take a look at this. Let's suppose we look at this and we assume that they're normally distributed. We say, well, if they're normally distributed, the mean is 100, and then the standard deviation is 15, so I should be able to go 15, 15, and fill out. So the mean is 100, then we have 115, 130, 145, and then back 85, 70, 55. So we want to know what proportion are, um, oh, did I say 130? I think it's supposed to be 136. But anyway, we'll go with 130. Uh, what proportion are greater than or equal to 130? Um, so that's this area to the right of 130. The problem is, like if we're using our table, we're just talking about z, which is the standard normal. We don't have that yet. So what we can do is we can, well, let's drop this down to a z and see, well, what would be the corresponding area there for a z? It should be the same. And so on a z, distribution, it's 0 in the middle, and then 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So the probability that x is at least 130 is the same as the probability that z is greater than or equal to 2. And let's see if we can do that here. I want to go to, not to my kids, where's the one I want? There we go. Uh, we can do stat, calculators, and normal. And we'll do 0, let's see, mean is 0 and 1, less than or equal to 2, except I want to go greater than or equal to, and there's compute. So we have a probability of 0 0.0228. Usually we do four decimal places here. There's no hard rule that you have to, um, but that's usually what we do. So this is one way to do it is to say, all right, let's take the original value, 130, translate it into a z. I guess I should explain how we got that, didn't I? So, <laughs> little gap here. So what um, what we're doing to do this is we're using the um, the old z-score, where you take um, the value minus the mean and divide by the standard deviation. So I'm going to pause the video here. You'll see a little jump, and I'll put the formula up here again for you. All right. So there's the formula for the z-score, um, just like we did back in chapter oh, chapter three where we say how many standard deviations is it? And so we take the value 130 minus the mean, which was 100, and divide by the standard deviation, uh, which, is, um, which is 15. Now you can see here 130 is exactly two standard deviations, so we ended up down here at two. Of course, we've got all kinds of issues with my PowerPoint here. It's supposed to be 136. So. The principle here is the same, though. You have 130. That's the value that you're looking at. What is the probability of being to the right of that? And so you need to translate that to how many standard deviations that is. You need to get the z-score. All right, so let's try another example. Um, I thought I would pull in one from recent news here. Uh, according to NFL rules, um, the ball has to be inflated to an air pressure of 12.5 to 13.5 pounds per square inch. Now here's the thing. Whenever you measure something, um, you don't know if it's 100% accurate. You can't actually measure anything 100% accurately. There's always some margin of error. Now, the, the, the better tool, the better device that you use, the better gauge is going to be more precise. But even like 
even if I grab like the weight of this little pen. And I, if I put this on my bathroom scale, it's probably not even going to register. It's probably going to say zero, but does that mean its weight is zero? Right? It has some weight, it's just not within the margin of error of the scale. Even if the scale says 0 0.2, well, is it 0 0.21 or 0 0.18? You're never going to know. There's some margin of error within that measurement. No matter how precise you are, there's always some margin of error. You can have a really small margin of error, and that's good, but there's still going to be some margin of error. So let's suppose that we have an air pressure gauge, and I just made up these numbers. So this has nothing really to do with the NFL controversy. I just made these up. But let's suppose it has an average error of zero. So on average, it's right, and with a standard deviation of 0.3 pounds per square inch. I have no idea if that's actually the standard deviation of the error here. I'm, again, just for the sake of example. Let's suppose that a ball was inflated to 13 pounds per square inch. So ideally, if we measured it, we measured it to be 13. But we might measure it a little low, a little high. Question is, what is the likelihood that the gauge would measure its pressure at less than 12.5? So basically, what is the likelihood if these made up number, if this made up standard deviation is true, what is the likelihood that it would measure um, to be underinflated? So let's go to StatCrunch. Oh, uh, there we go. So we said if we look at our error, the average error is 0, and the standard deviation is 0.3. We want to know what's the probability that we're that we're going to be below 12.5 pounds per square inch, but here we're talking about the error. So in order to be below 12.5, that would have to be because we the ball is actually um, the ball is actually at 13. So we would have to have an error of negative 0.5 or more. So negative 0.5. So here would be correct. That would be 13. And then if the error is a half, that would be 12.5. And so here's the probability of being less than that. And again, you know, these are just kind of made up numbers. The 12.5 and 13.5 are correct. Those I looked up. Um, but um, the standard deviation, that, I'm sure it's much smaller than that. That's a pretty large standard deviation. Um, so here, according to this, the probability is it's almost 5% of the time. So almost 5% of the time, according to these, um, you could actually be incorrect. So about 0 0.05 would be that probability, or 0 0.0478, I think it was something like that. So that's one example, or a couple of examples. There are many, many more um, about using the normal distribution um, to estimate what's the likelihood that something could happen, or what percentage of um, observations would be in that area. The other type of question is working backward. So now, what if I know the percent um, or the area, but I want to know the value? So say we're looking at IQ scores. Um, we know the mean is 100. And I want to know what the 95th percentile is. So the 95th percentile would be at the very top. Those are the ones that are above 95%. So let me see, click in here. Um, they would have then an area of 0 0.05 to the right. They're at the very top. So what I want to do is I want to figure out what's the value that has area 0 0.05 to the right. Well, we can just use the same thing in StatCrunch we change our mean and standard deviations, 100 to 15 this time. But now I want to find, let's see, I guess I could do area to the left. Now I'm going to delete the value because that's unknown. And I'm going to put in the area to the left, 0.95. And so that'll tell me about 125. About 125. Now I could have done greater than or equal to done greater than or equal to and I said the area to the right is 0.05 and again it's about 125 because of that symmetry 0 0.95 0 0.05 they have to add up to 1 uh, and so whether you look for the area to the left being 0.95 or area to the right being 0.05 they'll be the same so that particular value would be about um, what did we say? 125. So an IQ in the 95th percentile would be about 125. 
So those are the two types of questions. We're going to stop here. Again, there's a lot more types of examples, but the two main questions are, what is the probability of being in a certain interval? And then second, okay, here is the probability. What's the value? So two directions there. Uh, and so we've done a couple examples today to kind of illustrate those ideas.